Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, uh, we are going to do another installment of This Is Not A Top 10. And um, this is a very important video uh, because it is going to highlight one of my favorite notes called uh, patchouli. Now, um, I took a lot of time picking out these fragrances from my collection. Uh, I really thought about which ones have that um, patchouli note dominating the scent, so to speak, because a lot of fragrances have patchouli in them, even if it's just the base, and it would be impossible to highlight them all. So these are just kind of a, um, you know, a smorgasbord of options from my collection that uh, has patchouli as what I would call a featured note. Some are patchouli dominant, some, you know, use patchouli around other notes to create the composition. Uh, but first, I just want to talk a little bit about patchouli itself. Most people don't know that patchouli is actually in the mint family. Uh, it has this sweet, spicy, musky type smell, which I actually really love. Um, and Indonesia produces 90% of the global uh, volume of the world's patchouli oil, which I also didn't know. I knew it was grown in other places, uh, Southeast Asia, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, Indonesia is apparently, is apparently the big one, um, 90%. So anyways, let's talk about some of these fragrances here. Um, and the way that I organize this, this is a lot of fragrances. So again, my videos, if you've been watching, you know, I don't follow the script. Uh, these are not shorts. These are not, you know, just little highlights of compliment getters. All of these I also bought with my own money. Uh, none of these were ever given to me by the brands. These are all my opinions. And the way that I kind of organize this list is I tried to organize it a little bit from, you know, fragrances where patchouli was one piece of a larger composition. And then as we get down to the end, you're going to see more and more of my favorite patchouli dominant fragrances. But this is not a list in, in order of like. I did save my favorite for last, as usual, but um, it's not a list of favorites. You'll, you'll even see some of my favorites coming up very soon because uh, of the way that patchouli is used. Okay. So let's start with one of the strangest uses of patchouli that I have come across in a fragrance. And this is created by uh, Francis Kirkjean. And this is a fragrance from Narciso Rodriguez called For Him. And look at the uh, color of the, it almost looks like a nail polish bottle. Um, you know, it has that uh, gray coating. You cannot see the juice through the, through the coating of the bottle. Um, and what makes this so crazy of a use of patchouli is the patchouli is definitely what is, you know, anchoring everything down. But then there's this insane use of um, violet leaf with those heavy white musks that, you know, Francis Kirkjohn is so used to loving. Um, Fragrantica also says there's an amber note in here. I don't know. It's... Um, it's basically the first three big notes for me, violet leaf, musk, and patchouli. Um, and so this is one of the most, you know, if, if, if you lived in Seattle and everything was gray and rainy all the time and you needed a fragrance, you know, this is, uh, this almost gives off that. It, it feels a little bit like the, the color of the bottle. It is a little gloomy. It works great on rainy days though. It's unique. Um, and you know, if, um, this is interesting because this was a designer, by the way. Uh, most uh, designer houses nowadays are not putting out stuff like this. So um, Narciso Rodriguez for him is, um, is the first one on this list. The second one is a niche fragrance. It's the only thing I've smelled from this brand that has actually made me go out and buy a bottle. Uh, most stuff I've smelled from this brand, I'm not a fan. I'm also not a fan of the perfumer and her stance on Ifra, but we'll save that for another video. This is 4160 Tuesdays, and it's uh, called Shazam. Did I hold this right? I can't even tell. What am I showing you guys? Yeah, Shazam. Um, okay, so Shazam is an interesting fragrance because you get a heavy hit of tangerine and freshness in the top. Um, and the patchouli and the cacao in the base mixes with this cedar and olibanum and spices like cardamom and pepper to give off this very fresh take on patchouli. 
Um, if I wanted to wear a patchouli in the summer, you know, in the heat, I think this would be one to, to reach for because even though those notes seem heavy, olibanum, you know, uh, the frankincense, atlas cedar, uh, patchouli, amber, cacao, um, it doesn't wear heavy. It wears very light, and that's what I that's what I kind of like about it. Usually, I like my patchouli's heavy and dense, uh, but this one kind of walks that line where even in the heat, where I'm at in Texas, you know, you can pull this one off when it's um, most of the, most patchouli's are considered kind of cold weather because they add this real heft, this real depth to a fragrance. Uh, but um, you know, she has managed to keep this very light. Sarah McCartney has managed to keep this composition very light. And this is the only thing from her brand that I smelled that made me go, okay, this I can buy a bottle of. But for the most part, I'm not a fan, but this is a good fragrance. Okay, next is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And Rich Mitch's favorite fragrance of all time, I believe. It was created by master perfumer and legend, Gerard Antony, and it's Balenciaga Pour Homme. This is my 30 ml. I also have a 100 ml backup tester uh, that I got from Mudasir. Thank you, Mudasir. It's got the notes on the back. If you guys are interested in reading some of the notes directly from the brand, if it would focus, there you go. You absolutely can. You can pause it and, and read that. Um, but uh, this is a fragrance that came out in 1990. It is also supposedly the first fragrance to have a note of oud in the base but it's the patchouli that makes this so insane. And the reason that it's here early on is because patchouli is one piece of a much larger composition, brilliant composition, one of the greatest masculines of all time. Um, I would even consider this a fougere, um, even though it's not a normal, it's not a normal fougere style like you would think of. For some reason, when I wear it, when I, um, you know, when I look at the note tree and really think about it, it, it reminds me of a fougere composition, but it's got this heavy cinnamon that wraps around everything that just makes it so beautiful. There's also a note of coriander, which I mentioned I love. Uh, there's greenness in the top from bay leaves and thyme and, and galbanum. And then there's that patchouli, um, rock star patchouli, which you can also say for another one coming up very soon. Rockstar Patchouli. Um, Balenciaga, poor home. You know, prices are insane on these uh, vintage masculines now, but I've got, I don't know, probably 25 mils left, and I have a completely full 100 ml, so I think I'm set. I'm not going to buy 18 bottles like Rich Mitch, I'll tell you that. But um, very glad to have this. The uh, notes on the bottle, by the way, uh, differ from Fragrantica, of course, uh, but I'll just read them to you because they are interesting. Um, the top is... Uh, Cylon cinnamon, Italian bergamot, coriander, and thyme. Uh, the body is patchouli, sandalwood, cypress, and cedar. And then the dry notes, as they call it, oak moss, Yugoslavian oak moss. Take, you know, that's an interesting take. Vanilla bourbon, amber, and musk. Um, so good. This is just, it's such a enveloping warm. You just feel so natural where, I mean, I just feel it's like being, you know, in a comfort hug all day wearing this, and it is an all-day affair. This is a beast. I wore this for my um, daughter's um, second birthday. This was my scent of the day, and uh, great scent memory. If you have a special occasion, uh, I, I much prefer to reach for this than some of the, you know, overpriced niche uh, fragrances nowadays. Uh, Balenciaga Pour Homme, one of the most uh, unique uses of patchouli, in my opinion, but again, it's part of an overall composition, so that's why it's here. This is not a list ranked on favorites, because next is one of my favorite masculine fragrances of all time, and it's uh, Guerlain's Heritage. Uh, this is a vintage with the gold cap. Uh, as you can see, this was supposed to be like a, um, I forget what it's called now, but the thing that ticks back and forth. Um, and... I love this fragrance so much. This is, um, there is a rock star patchouli in this as well, um, but there's so much more. There's like 25 notes or 26 notes in this, something insane. This is um, on the masculine side, Jean-Paul Guerlain's uh, greatest creation, I think, because it harkens back to fragrances of the past. 
but it also harkens to fragrances of the future and what it ended up um you know hinting to in the future is Lauren Stant de Guerlain. This is probably what people think about when they think about patchouli. I didn't even wipe these bottles down, so there's probably thumbprints and fingerprints and dust all over it, but whatever. You guys get the drift. This is the bat this is the bottle with the black outline. They then re you know did a reformulation or a new bottle packaging where they took the black outline away and it's still the same bottle. It still says the O Extreme on the bottom and I have that bottle as well as a backup. I didn't bring it because it was just getting too much. Um, and then they reformulated it again and put it in the normal Listerine Guerlain bottles and people that I trust say that that is a very good reformulation. Um, but this is the one that everyone wants with the black outline that's going for 500 bucks on eBay. Um, and this is uh, a little bit more patchouli heavy than Heritage. I, if I had to pick, I don't know, I would probably pull my hair out, but I think I prefer Heritage a little bit more, but this is still one of my favorite gear lawns to wear. Uh, very glad to have two bottles of this so I never run out, um, but it was created by uh, uh, Beatrice Piquet, by the way, and there's a beautiful note of star anise in the opening, and then you get that cacao and patchouli in the base that's just so warm and enveloping. It's Lovely masculine fragrance, lovely. Um, and then uh, Jean-Paul uh, Gaultier put out his take on, I think, this scent DNA. Um, it came out in 2011. This one came out in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going off of memory. Uh, this one came out in 2011. It's Coco Rico, also discontinued. Um... Kind of like some of these other ones that I've been talking about, like Balenciaga Por Homme, long discontinued. Even this uh, Narciso Rodriguez, this EDT version is discontinued. Um, but uh, Coco Rico is uh, an interesting, look at the bottle, by the way. It's a head. If you turn it this way, it looks like the outline of the Lamal bottle on the side, which is kind of cool the way that they did that. Um, but um, this was created by Anique Minardo. And Olivier Cresp, two, you know, all-time greats. I love Anique Minardo's work. And um, they basically took this cacao patchouli DNA and they added a fresh fig leaf note at the top. So it does feel a little bit more green than, than, than this. Um, it also feels, I don't know how to say this, Guerlain's a designer, but this feels a little bit more designer-esque. Uh, than this. This feels more like a niche fragrance to my nose nowadays. And then they've added uh, cedar and vetiver or in the base. And um, great fragrance. Um, no, no one talks about this. I don't hear anyone talk about this when it comes to patchouli fragrances, but it's a beautiful patchouli heavy fragrance. Um, and it is discontinued. So if you can find it for cheap, don't pay silly money, obviously. But if you can find a good price on it, Coco Rico is um, one to pick up. One of my favorite Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances. And then, uh, I think I would be safe in saying my favorite uh, Davidoff fragrance of all time. And if you like fragrances like Heritage, uh, this is definitely one to uh, check out. This came out in 1986, so actually a few years before Heritage, and it... It, it reminds me a bit of Heritage. It reminds me a bit of, uh, um, oh, to, uh, oh gosh, what's the Tom Ford? Um, oh, it'll come to me later. Uh, but um, there's a Tom Ford fragrance called um, Beau de Jour that reminds me of uh, Zeno as well. And um, so this fragrance is, this is a, a one ounce, a 30 ml, and this is a... Uh, 75 ml backup and I have another one of this as well because I love this fragrance so much and if you can see these are both um, distributed by Lancaster which you might not be able to see it on this bottle I think you'll be able to see it on this one better with the sticker yeah there you go uh, distributed by Lancaster that's what you want to look for because this was reformulated and it was not reformulated for the better um, so if you can get these Lancaster bottles, uh, you know, 
take a look at these. And Zeno, by the way, was uh, Mr. Davidoff's first name, so this is actually named after him, uh, which, you know, is a, is a, is a, to put a fragrance out with your name on it really says something, and this takes that patchouli uh, feel uh, of heritage, but it adds a little bit more of a floral complexion. It also adds the note of Brazilian rosewood, which I love that note. Uh, that note is in Tom Ford's Oud Wood. Um, it's also in Happy Rouge. Brazilian rosewood is a beautiful note. It softens everything up. And, um, oh, that's so good. You know, Zeno is a, uh, is a classic. Uh, it came out in a great year, 19, 1986, for, for perfumery. And this was created by uh, Michel Almarac. He has so many just fantastic fragrances. Um... And again, the patchouli is there. It's part of the composition. I think the patchouli is actually a little bit more amped up in Zeno than Heritage, but you could argue that fact. I don't know. They're both. These are these are the DNA. When I when I think of a you know a um, gentleman, a classic mas you know a classic masculine fragrance for a gentleman, someone who wants to smell classy and refined and that they have impeccable taste, you know, this is what I would reach for. Something like this or this. These kind of fragrances just really do it for me. Um, and I'm glad to have them in my collection, especially now that the prices are starting to get kind of crazy. I also believe this is discontinued. Um, so I'm glad I have three bottles. I've got another one of these 75 mLs. Um, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's discontinued, so I think it's still readily available as well. I don't think people are rushing out to go buy this because of the scent DNA, but it's funny because they'll pay, you know, hundreds of dollars more for a Beau de Jour, uh, but they won't go spend 40 bucks on a Lancaster bottle of uh, Zeno. I don't understand it. Um, I almost prefer Zeno, actually, to be honest with you. I never bought Beau de Jour because I own Zeno and I own Heritage and it's just, you know, for me, there's, there's no need. And sometimes you can take those paths in your fragrance journey. If you have something, something else is heavily inspired by it. You know, you can save the couple hundred bucks, skip it and spend that money somewhere else. So, um, one of the all time best patchouli uses to me, uh, in a classic masculine is, uh, Davidoff's Zeno. And again, make sure you get the Lancaster bottle. Don't get the new formulation and then say it sucks. Next uh, is a niche fragrance that I've heard gets some hate on the uh, forums and, and on in Fragcom, but there, there's only two fragrances from this brand that I like. It's kind of similar to 4160 Tuesdays, you know, another niche brand that I only found one that I like. I only found two from this brand that I like. The rest of them I've smelled seem like crap to me. Uh, but this is uh, Nasomato's Pardon. And the other fragrance from this brand I like, by the way, that I own a bottle of is, um, is uh, man, I am drawing a blank today, uh, Black Afghano. Uh, so Black Afghano and Pardon are the two that I like from this brand. And I don't think this fragrance sucks. I think this is a good fragrance. Uh, if you like L'Instant de Guerlain, basically what they did is they took this DNA and they added some oud in the base. If you look on Fragrantica, there's no patchouli note listed on Pardon, but it's listed as dark chocolate. Well, how do they get that dark chocolate accord? Patchouli sometimes gives off that, you know, dark chocolatey feel. So they list dark chocolate, but it's patchouli creating that accord. And so Pardon, and look at the color of the juice. Um, you know, just beautiful composition. It, it also lasts for days. Um, and this is a 30 ml extra de parfum. All of Nasomato's caps come in this, you know, wood. Um, each cap is, is kind of unique in and of itself. But um, yeah, this is a great fragrance. Don't, don't write this off because, you know, of somebody's opinion. Try it for yourself. You know, I did. I liked it. I bought it. Uh, okay, now we're going to go back in time. We're going to go to a vintage fragrance, uh, which has the funniest, greatest name. And if you've ever seen the box on this fragrance, also fantastic um, presentation. It's from the house of Jovan, which makes very cheap fragrances. And this is called Sex Appeal from 1975. Um, and this came out one year after my favorite 
uh, patchouli fragrance. And if you know your fragrance history, I just gave it away. If you can figure it out before I told you, let me know in the comments. Um, but Jovan Sex Appeal, it only shows two notes in Fragrantica. This is another one uh, where it shows spices and green notes. But to my nose, there's a heavy patchouli in this. And it's so good for, you know, this is the vintage presentation. You'll notice that the new presentations, I think, maybe have like a silver cap instead of black. Uh, I'm not 100% sure the different formulas. I just know this is an older bottle. Uh, and I got two. Actually, I got two for a very good price. So I scooped them up. I mean, you know, will I wear this very often? Probably not. But um, it's a great patchouli. It's amazing that this is what kind of came out. Look at the cheapness of the atomizer. Um, you know, it's amazing that this is what used to come out. And it's funny because I've heard other people in Fragcom say, oh, I used to wear stuff like this 10 or 15 years ago. And then I got into niche and I bought stuff like this and I threw stuff like this away or gave it away because I'm too good for it. No, this is, um, you will regret giving stuff like this away or throwing it away because they don't make fragrances like this anymore. You know, this is a time capsule of the mid 70s and it's um, and it's enjoyable for me to wear and it actually does get uh, relatively good feedback. I've never had someone come up to me and say, oh, you smell like you're wearing a ten dollar fragrance from, uh, you know, Walgreens or CVS. No, this is um, this is quality stuff. I don't know about the new formulation, though. That's the only thing. So if you can find a vintage, let me know. Um, the batch code is, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but it's right there. And um, Jovan Sex Appeal, no one talks about stuff like this anymore unless you're just talking about vintage fragrances. Great patchouli. And then we're going to get into a little bit of a controversial topic, which is a gourmand patchouli. I'm going to show you two. Um, the first came out a couple years before the second. The second gets all the love, but... I like them both equally. Again, some people might crucify me for that. I don't care. Uh, this came out in 1994, and it's Animal Animal for Men. Now, be careful with this because there's an Animal for Men, not Animal Animal. They couldn't have made it any more confusing if they tried. Make sure you get Animal Animal for Men if you're looking for the one that smells like the next fragrance coming up. Um, but this is basically, they consider this the first gourmand. Uh, they, they say that they created it for men, basically not the next one coming up. If you know your fragrance history in the mid nineties, you know what's coming up next. Um, but I love wearing this fragrance, believe it or not. And this is a modern formulation too. This is not a, um, a vintage, but what's interesting about the house of animal is that they haven't been purchased by a big fragrance brand conglomerate yet. They're still kind of sitting on out there on their own, you know, selling their 5 million bottles a year, whatever they sell, I have no idea. Um, but uh, the fact that they have been able to withhold the onslaught of being bought by a big brand is interesting. And this is basically honey, pineapple, vanilla, tobacco, patchouli, amber, nutmeg, lavender, sandalwood, musk, lime, galbanum, lang lang, cedar, rose, jasmine, lemon, and lily of the valley. And this is a gourmand. Um, so the, the fragrance that came two years later, that got all the fame. And if you ask someone who is the first um, gourmand fragrance for men, patchouli heavy usage, it is a men. Uh, this came out in 1996. This came out in 1994. Uh, they smell very, very similar. And, um, you know, this is a very uh, distinctive use of patchouli, let's say. And that's why it's here and not kind of further along on the list. It probably could have even been back a bit because I think maybe Zeno uses diva, uh, patchouli a little bit more. But, you know, I'm just kind of ballparking thing here. This is an estimate. This is not a scientific list. If you disagree with me, let me know. I'm not going to be upset or anything. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, Amen adds the note of mint in the top. It adds the note of fruity. You know, there's this fruity feeling with Amen. There's there's milk note listed in Fragrantica. There's caramel and there's coffee. So they took, you know, what was already kind of a gourmand 
it made it even more gourmand, I think. I love them both. I love wearing them both. Uh, but the patchouli is the anchor uh, in both of these scents, as it usually is. Uh, there's also, you know, a note of um, tonka and benzoin and this warmth of amber listed. And I think both of these. Um, but, um, you know, it, if you're going to buy, by the way, you can just go buy this one for 20 bucks and be, and be safe and assured. Just make sure you get the animal, animal, not the original animal. The original animal for man is a completely different fragrance. It smells like the citrus fresh thing from the, you know, early nineties. Um, and, uh, so if you can get Animal, animal for a good price, go scoop it up. But if you're going to buy a men, you have to be careful. Go watch my L'Oreal video if you want to get more in depth. Uh, but Mugler was purchased by the House of L'Oreal uh, years ago. And I think L'Oreal has done a pathetic job on the reformulations or caring. You know, they're trying to put out these $350 Mugler exclusives, but they've completely neglected what made Mugler Mugler. You know, they, they've ruined Amen Pure Havan. They've ruined uh, Pure Malt. You know, uh, Taste of Fragrance, I think, is long discontinued. Some of my favorites there are basically slaughtered. B-Men is gone. Uh, and so, you know, if you're going to buy this, the only recommendation that I will give you is make sure that you buy the... Come on, baby. Come on. You can do it. Is happening today let's see okay there we go make sure you buy the uh, version that actually says Thierry Mugler right there don't buy the new Mugler version uh, well first of all don't put money in L'Oreal's pockets for the crime that they've committed with the house of Mugler number one uh, but number two if you can find this version it is so much better. You know, Amen was supposed to be this heavy. This is the vintage bottle that I have that actually says Angel Men. You can see it right there, clear as day. Um, so this is an older formulation. But it's supposed to be this heavy, brash, in-your-face fragrance. You know, it's not supposed to be this weak thing that disappears in, in an hour or two. And so I think the reformulation, whatever junior perfumer they gave the project to reformulate, amen, to me. Um, but if you can find a vintage, this is one of the greatest, most interesting gourmand fragrances for men there is. And it's a fantastic case study on, uh, you know, how to use patchouli in a, in a fragrance. Okay, next. Um, next is an expensive niche fragrance. Uh, from one of my favorite houses. It's become one of my favorite houses, actually, because of some of the things that I've found from this house. You know, I kind of ignored them early on, and that was my mistake at my peril. Early on in my journey, I should say. You know, five, ten years ago, I wasn't into this house. Uh, but now that I am, I'm finding just fantastic fragrances. And, and one of them is a creation by Bruno Jovanovic, and it's called, it's just simply called Monsieur. And uh, this is one of the most interesting takes on patchouli because there's this, it's definitely patchouli heavy, hands down. I mean, this is a patchouli fragrance through and through. But then they've done some things around the periphery to um, make it different and interesting. And um, apparently also there's a story about the patchouli that they use. They, they distilled it in a specific way. Uh, for specifically for this fragrance, you can probably find some info on the internet if you're really interested in it. Just look up how you know Frederick Mall and uh, Bruno distilled the patchouli for this fragrance. It was a special technique. Uh, I can't remember it, but you can find it. But they use this rum note and tangerine in the top, and most people probably wouldn't be able to tell it was tangerine by smelling it. But I think if you tell them it's tangerine. They'll go, oh, okay, I, I can see that now. But then there's this beautiful incense note that also runs through this. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's heavy patchouli with this rum that gives it a little bit of booziness, this incense. And it is a beast. It's a monster. It's a heavy perfume. Uh, very synthetic, but very well done. 
and I am so glad I have a hundred mil of this. Um, this is uh, turned into one of my favorite patchouli's. And then next on the list is uh, probably the one that when you say patchouli, if Chanel is your favorite brand, this is what comes to mind. It is Coromandel. And uh, this is the um, Eau de Parfum. I don't know if you can see that, but it is the Eau de Parfum. Uh, this is the newer one. I've never compared the EDT to the Eau de Parfum. I wish I, you know, could have the opportunity to one day, but I never have. I hear the EDT is better, but, you know, who knows? I'm actually happy with this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good wear. Uh, I think it smells fantastic on a woman as well. It was created by Jacques Polge. Um, I don't know exactly when this one was, I think, put out in 2016, but I'm not sure when the original was put out. Uh, but there's these uh, citruses in the top, and then there's a beautiful patchouli mixed with orris. And I love that butteriness of, of the fragrance. And there's a, a classic Chanel rose jasmine combo. And then there's incense and olibanum. And there's that famous white chocolate note in the base of this as well. Um, and so Cora Mandel is... Um, is one that I think is very synonymous with patchouli. When you mention patchouli, they mention this. They mention Serge Luton's Borneo 1834, which I don't have. Uh, they mention Dior's Patchouli Imperial, which I don't have. Um, so there's some patchoulis that I never really went for because I feel like I am pretty well stocked. And you'll see now we're getting into kind of the, the heart of the patchouli lineup. So we're 30 minutes in, now we're really getting into the heart. So the next one is a newer fragrance, but I, I love this brand. It came out in 2018, and it's from the House of Diptyque. It's called Tempo. And Tempo, you know, it's, 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 I know this is very, um, it's, it's very standard to say this, but it's Diptyque's take on a patchouli fragrance. They have a very specific feel to me. They don't necessarily have a house DNA, like uh, Andy Tower has Tower Rod and so forth and so on. No, they don't have that. But what they have is they have a specific feel, the house does. And even though their fragrances are synthetic, they're very well done and I appreciate them. And I feel the same way about Tempo. Uh, it is not the most mind-blowing fragrance. The artwork is beautiful on the bottle, by the way. You've got this uh, psychedelic mushrooms here at the top. Uh, and of course, they've got on the back just crazy stuff happening because it's psychedelic in the 60s with patchouli. And there's almost like a patchouli plant down there. There's smoke coming out of the of the mountain. So um, very interesting, very interesting uh, take. And I think they're showing you that this is a throwback to the 60s and 70s, but in a niche way. So if you want something that is a little bit more palatable to modern noses, if wearing something, you know, vintage may not uh, be your cup of tea, this is the one that I would recommend that you take a look at. Um, and there's an interesting note of, mat of um, mate in here. And there's also an interesting violet leaf note, but it's really covered up by the patchouli heavy. The patchouli is the dominant note in this, to my nose, anyways. But those notes around the periphery, very similar to, you know, what Monsieur did. Patchouli is the star in both of these to me. Uh, but what they put around the edges, you know, the things that your nose smells while you're really getting the big hit of patchouli is what differentiates these type of niche fragrances. So very glad to have this. Uh, I know it's not talked about very much. Um, I think there's a note of Palo Alto wood in here as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's not listed in the note tree, but for some reason I, yeah, it, it feels that way to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but, um, Tempo, if you're a, if you're a lover of some of these vintage patchoulis that are coming up very soon, this is one to put on your radar. And then next we're going to do my scent of the day, um, which is... Bois 1920, real patchouli. Now, there is a problem with the house of Bois 1920, by the way. 
And the problem is that they have reformulated their fragrances. Um, and what they've done is that they have taken the old EDTs that we all knew and love, and they turn them into EDPs. Now, Rich did a video on his channel, you can find it, where he actually bought a fragrance where the box said EDT, but inside, when he got it, it actually said EDP instead of the EDT, which you say, which you will see right here. So the EDTs are gone, they're, they're no more. Now, Bois 1920, oh, I love this fragrance, says that there's no change in smell. Rich Mitch said he disagrees. Um, and so just if you can find the EDT now, because word only got out a month or two ago that that was happening, uh, go for it. Also, if you can see the color of my juice, the new ones are almost clear looking. Um, and, and the fact that they're willing to risk maybe putting something in a box that doesn't match almost feels like they had serious pressure, maybe from the regulators from IFRA, I don't know. I don't know why they would risk doing something like that. But it's terrible press for the brand. I have a couple of these. I have another one from this house that I really love called Vetiver Ambrato. Uh, it's an amber vetiver, basically. That I would I would have hyped to the moon. Um, no one's talking about that fragrance, by the way. Um, but I I I don't know if I want to pump up a brand that is willing to do something like that. So. Don't give money to this brand by buying the new stuff, in my opinion. Buy the vintage, buy the old stuff, uh, if you can find it while there's still stock. Uh, this is, uh, oh, by the way, this fragrance, um, it's not only about patchouli, it's an amber patchouli. So there's a beautiful labdanum note. Um, there's also a note of tobacco in the base, which this is a four hour dry down. Yeah, there is a tobacco, vanilla, benzoin, warmth base, but then the patchouli, I would say this fragrance is split into maybe thirds or quarters, and the patchouli is maybe 30, 35, 40%. But then there's other interesting, there's also, by the way, I should mention, I don't know where it's coming from because I don't see it in the note listing, but I get like this, um, I get like this castorium feel from this fragrance especially the first hour. It feels like if you've watched some of my le if you watched my leather fragrance video by the way, I mentioned that my favorite leathers are the ones that use that castorium accord to create the leather like Antaeus and Leonard Porhom and Van Cleef and Arpels Porhom stuff like that. This feels like they've taken that patchouli heavy um fragrance and mixed in a castorium note in the base. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's there. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this fragrance is it has the note of eucalyptus, which I mentioned earlier, I only found in two fragrances, uh, Body Koros and uh, Royal Mayfair by Creed. And then I, I totally forgot that eucalyptus was in this one as well. So, um, very interesting take on patchouli, but only get the EDT. I can't speak for the EDP at all. So if you get the EDP, uh, you might be let down. But if you can find the EDT, I, I would definitely give this one a wreck. Also, this was Carlos from um, Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Passed away, rest in peace. This was his favorite patchouli. Um, and it is very good. I'm surprised no one talks about this. I'm surprised no one talks more about this brand, to be honest with you. Uh, but then again, when they pull shenanigans like like what they did earlier, I, you know, I can I can totally see why. Sorry about the hair. Um, I'm usually at an office when I work, but I've been working from home since the pandemic, and so I've kind of just let the hair run wild. Um, next is one of Rich Mitch's favorite fragrances of all time. And quite frankly, in my opinion, one of the best patchouli fragrances of all time. It's considered a chiffre, but it's, to me, it's a patchouli dominant fragrance. And it's uh, Pavarotti, Luciano Pavarotti. Um, this is the men's version, obviously. There's also a woman's version, so you can see the shape of the bottle. Don't, don't go by the woman's version by mistake. Uh, but this is a fragrance that to me is a beautiful journey with patchouli because there is this citrus top 
Uh, there's ver lemon verbena, Amalfi lemons, there's Petit Gras, there's Narrowly, there's even a note of ivy, which I can't say that I get, um, and then bergamot, and then it hits the, the, the mid, which is where it really shines. There's patchouli, there's that powderiness of iris that I love, there's a beautiful rose and geranium florals, and then you get this uh, clove, a little bit of clove in this as well to make it unique, but then in the base is where it really differentiates itself. From most patchoulis, there's white honey, there's benzoin, there's oak moss, there's a poppinax, there's tonka, there's leather, um, there's uh, liatris, vanilla, and amber. Now, I heard Rich Mitch say that he wears this in the summer sometimes, which this is a pretty heavy fragrance for summer wear, but I, I understand what he's saying because even though it has all those heavy notes, um, you know, it's done almost in like an Italian style. This came out, I think, in 1994. Uh, a Givaudan perfumer called David Appel created this fragrance. And um, this could easily be a signature scent. I mean, if you love patchouli and you've never smelled this, you have to get your nose on this. Um, in fact, there's another fragrance that... So this came out in 1994, discontinued, but still can be found uh for for a decent deal there's another fragrance that tom ford put out in his original release of private brand blends i don't have a full bottle um it's it came out in 2007 and it's called moss brex can you see that and this is almost like a niche version of this to be honest i i could give or take it doesn't matter to me I would wear both and, and be happy either way. Um, but they're obviously charging a hell of a lot more for this. And that's why I only have a little decan. It's almost impossible to find now. So I'm glad that I even have what I have. Uh, but this adds a note of beeswax instead of honey. And then there's sage and rosemary and tarragon. But it feels the benzoin, the patchouli, the cedar heavily reminds me of this. I told I told Rich Mitch that one day that these two are cousins in my mind and he's never smelled this um and uh kind of knocked them knocked them for a six if you will but fantastic fragrances both if you're a patchouli lover with honey which i told you in previous videos honey animalic honey beeswax is one of my favorite accords i love what it does to a fragrance uh you'll see that coming up later with my favorite patchouli fragrance um, Moss Brex or Pavarotti are, are two to keep on the radar. And then I'm going to recommend this one, but keep in mind the version that I have is a much older bottle than anything being sold today. I taped it on because it was falling off and I wanted you guys to see it. Uh, oh, this is Pierre Cardon Pour Monsieur. Uh, this came out in uh, 1972. So this is the grandfather of my favorite fragrance. Uh, but this is the made in France version. I don't know if you can see that. You can pause that and see that. Um, let's see, how can I? Okay. That's as good as it's gonna be. This is the made in France version, which they stopped making it in France a long, long, long time ago um and this is almost like the godfather of patchouli fragrances because it gives off this uh patchouli vibe for sure heavy patchouli in this to me all these patchouli fragrances as we're getting along now you know heavy patchouli starts to smell like patchouli to me it's very hard to make patchouli smell different so what they do is they do these tricks around the perimeter to my nose anyways the trick with this is that there's beautiful natural oak moss in the base which i'm sure the reformulated one does not have uh look at the cheapness of the atomizer by the way I basically got this for free. I mean, not for free, but the guy gave it to me. Uh, he had no, I don't think he knew what he had. Um, and, you know, he, he also gave me another fragrance with it basically for free. Um, I think it was like five or 10 bucks, but I'll, I'll call it free. 
And um, this has the added note of lavender in the top with basil, and then there's this sandalwood and car old school carnation, which I love. And then there's this leather, which makes this a little bit interesting. Um, but if you can, I, I haven't smelled the new stuff, so you might buy a new bottle and go, this is awful. But this is an amazing patchouli fragrance. I could easily reach for this when I get a patchouli fix uh, for my patchouli fix. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, and then there's that little bit of added freshness. I love it. But again, it's the, um, I couldn't even read the, uh, um, I couldn't even read the address of the joint if I wanted to. Uh, I won't even try, but there's the, there's the bottom. Um, so anyways, very happy to have this. If you can find a made in France version, go for it. And then another patchouli dominant fragrance that came out in the 1980s. This was 1984. Fantastic year in perfumery. Uh, this is Giorgio for Men by Giorgio Beverly Hills. This is also a vintage bottle. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'll try to show you. Um... Yeah, you probably won't be able to read all that stuff. But this is a vintage. Oh, it's just this woody, patchouli, warm. There's honey again in this. I love the note of honey in, in my patchouli mixed together. As you can see, we're getting down to the heavy hitters here. Um, this is aldehydes in the top with orange and fruity notes. And then you hit the heart. Patchouli, rose, carnation, cinnamon, sandalwood, cedar, orris. And then that animalic honey from the 80s in the base with real oak moss. Oh, I love this type of fragrance so much. It's so, so good. The I hear that the modern formula is quite good. Um, Wafts from the Lofts did a video, and they said that the modern was very good, but I've never compared the two, and I and I have I have the older bottle, so I, you know, the, the juice color in this is much darker than what it looks like now. It almost looks green in, in the newer bottles. Uh, but if you've never smelled some of these little cheapies, like if you've never smelled, uh, this, or if you've never smelled, you know, this, where you can get them for cheap and try them, I would say even this, if you can hunt down an older bottle, I got this for so cheap, it's, I feel like I robbed the guy. Um, but if, if you can find some of these older patchouli fragrances for cheap, get them, they'll, they'll blow you away. I mean, that, the, this is the heyday of patchouli. You're not going to get much better than this. And then speaking of heyday of patchouli, uh, I did a video yesterday on a first impression from this house. Blew me away. Um, and this is one of this was my favorite fragrance from them up until that point. I don't know anymore what, what's my favorite because uh, Teatro Alla Scala blew me away yesterday. But this is Moods by Critzia. Um, this came out in the late 80s. It came out in uh, 1989, and um, this is, I mean, this is patchouli through and through. It has a lot of other notes around it, coriander, lavender, aldehydes in the top, cardamom as well. There's a beautiful cardamom note in this that makes it very masculine. And then there's ginger to freshen it up with that old school uh, carnation, geranium, lily of the valley, and jasmine. And then the base of real oak moss. Amber, cedar, musk, tonka, vanilla. Oh, it's so good. This is one of my favorite patchouli fragrances to wear because it's so masculine. Uh, it doesn't have the honey note like some of the ones that I've shown recently do. Um, but uh, I really, I really love this. If I, if I get a patchouli fix, any of these last 10 that I've shown, you know, really do it for me. And then we're down to the final two. Um, I'm going to show you a niche patchouli fragrance first, and then I'll show you my favorite patchouli fragrance of all time. So the niche is from a house that I haven't shown on this channel yet, but I have fragrances from them. I have bottles from them. I will, I will highlight some of them because I think this house deserves to be highlighted. It's from the house of, uh, Javois, Javoy, and it is Psychedelic. Um, they come in this beautiful snakeskin looking box, if you will. Uh, and everything's premium, uh, on this, on this brand, but you don't pay huge prices, which I like. Uh, this is, this bottle is super heavy, by the way. This is a crystal bottle. Uh, the cap is nice and heavy. Um, 
and the fragrance is psychedelic. And this is one of the best patchouli. If you like that, you know, Sebastian did a video on his channel where he kept saying, if you like that chocolate cakey patchouli, uh, which I see what he's getting at. Uh, this is a, this is a um, beautiful niche take on patchouli. Um, you know, it does add a, uh, it's basically patchouli and amber and labdanum. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, fantastic fragrance, this one. Uh, if you if you want something that is a little bit more modern, you know, uh, it's more able to be uh, swallowed by, you know, the average, let's say, citizen walking around. If you're going to be wearing these God knows where and you're worried about someone going, oh, you smell like something from the 1980s, then I would recommend, you know, something like Tempo. Or something like psychedelic. They're not my favorite, though. I prefer the older school ones, believe it or not. But uh, as far as how could you make a patchouli list without adding psychedelic, it is. Um, it really is a, a great fragrance. I'm glad to have it. But is it worth the, the 180 bucks, 190 bucks a bottle? Value for money on this is very good because you get a lot of quality with this house. But I don't know if somebody like me that has 20 or 30 other patchouli fragrances, if the value for money is really there. But if you don't have very many, then this is one that I would highly recommend. Okay, on to my final fragrance. And we're under the one hour mark, so I feel like I've done us justice here. My favorite patchouli, if you know your fragrance history, you know what's coming, is... Givenchy Gentleman from 1974. This is everything I love in a fragrance. Uh, it's animalic. It's, uh, it's, it's got a beautiful animalic honey as well. So it's animalic from the civet. Uh, but it also has this animalic honey which adds to it. And then it has this beautiful note of leather, patchouli, uh, amber. There's that old school tarragon which I love in the top. Um, and this is a splash, by the way. Um, oh God, I love this. This is such a gentleman's fragrance. I don't care if they say, oh, you'll smell like your grandpa. No. Now, the thing about this is that this silver label that you're looking at right here is long discontinued. Okay, so if you go try to buy Givenchy Gentleman, the only thing I can tell you is look for this silver label. I also have a backup because I love this fragrance so much in a spray but it's the silver label that you have to look for because they reformulated it um and this is a tester that i got off of uh, mudasir but um these are when the ingredients were like you know three water parf parfum and alcohol and that's that um i just love i love i love the animalic take on this when it wears it wears it wears so interesting to somebody like me where I've smelled a lot of fragrances it keeps my attention but I know it's also gentlemanly it is old school though this came out in 1974 uh this was the was the grandfather you know and then or this was this was the grandfather this is the father and then I would say something like this uh you know, it is the way you could track the lineage down the line of patchouli, uh, which Rich Mitch did a video on that, by the way, too. Check that out. Uh, patchouli through the years, I think he called it or something. But um, Givenchy Gentleman is my favorite, but it's just a personal take because it's my take on it. And, um, you know, these are so special. I don't think you'll ever see perfumes like this made anymore. It's just, it's of that time, it's imprint, it, it leaves an imprint in your mind to me. You know, if you wear this out and about, and um, you come across people and they smell this on you, uh, it just, it's like a, it's like a stamp in their brain, you know? You are, you're different, you think different, you act different, you don't go by Bleu de Chanel or, or Sauvage EDT, you know, you're out buying stuff like this. You're out wearing stuff like this. You're different. You're, you know, you're complex. You're all these other things. You don't follow the trend. You know, you swim against the stream. That's the kind of 
uh, impression that you will leave on people if you wear stuff like this, which I do. I love wearing stuff like this. So, um, thanks for watching an hour video on patchouli. I hope I found, you know, I hope I had left a couple of them uh, on your memories where you can go try them out. Let me know if you do get a chance to try them, what you think. Uh, again, these are just my opinions, but I think this is a pretty good comprehensive patchouli list. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks again for watching, and everyone have a great day. Cheers.